Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. Week 13, Monday Night Football, the single game showdown between the Washington Redskins and the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going to talk you through all the different combinations that we're going to go over on DraftKings. I'm going to talk about who I like in the captain spot, how we can work some uh, other players into the flex spots, a couple of value plays maybe that we can use to unlock a lot of the, the high-end studs. This is basically what we do every single week. For those of you who are new, thank you for being here. Drop a like on the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit that notifications bell. Hopefully you did well on the main slate in week 13. Some of the, uh, it's still in the middle of it. I'm taping this in the middle of the second part of the game. So the 4 p.m. games Eastern, 1 p.m. games Pacific. It's halftime. A lot of the chalk smashed today. Some of it didn't. Let me know in the chat how you guys have been doing. And also look out for the review video that comes out every Monday. Uh, where I go over all my plays from the previous week, as well as do a first look. So there's a bunch of videos coming, just like every week. I produce a lot of content here on YouTube from my stream on Twitch, and I'd love to meet you, so come on by Twitch. Uh, all the links are down below for all my other socials. Right in the description, just click show more. So let's get over and take a look at how this uh, slate looks like it's going to break down. Just like always, 1.5x salary for the guy that you're going to throw into the captain spot in Zach Ertz. One of the highest projected players on this slate, somebody that you have to be aware of if you've ever played any sort of fantasy DFS this season. The guy's an absolute crusher. Uh, when it comes to tight ends, Gronk has set the standard over the previous few seasons for what a tight end could be offensively in terms of fantasy. And right now, Zach Ertz and Travis Kelsey are basically prime Gronk candidates. You're getting... Uh, Look, double-digit targets, how many weeks this year? 100-yard games three, four times this year. Six touchdowns on the year. Basically, you're getting a wide receiver one, a primary weapon encased in a tight end's body and utilized as such. So uh, not many players have the ability at tight end to top 30 and 40 points pretty much ever. And, and Ertz has done it multiple times in his career, at least once this year with 43.5 against Dallas back in week 10. Uh, definitely a captain... Somebody I'm considering for captains this week. I don't know that he's most definitely going to be, end up being my captain, but he's somebody that for tournaments I want to have some allocation uh, of at my captain spot. I think there's some other guys that are a little bit cheaper uh, that I think might be more suited to captain to allow us to still get some exposure to Ertz, at least in cash games. You're playing head-to-heads, and if you're playing tournaments, uh, we'll talk about a couple of strategies to go with that as well. Now... His quarterback, Carson Wentz, another player who's not been playing up to the level that he was playing at last year. Only 19.8 fantasy points per game. Last year, he had uh, a ton of touchdowns. Uh, was going to lead the league in touchdowns before he, he got hurt and blew his knee out. Uh, still a solid quarterback rating. Still has the ability to throw for a ceiling game, but hasn't done it since week 10 when he had 25 DraftKings points. Now, can he get back here this week or back to that kind of rarefied air this week against Washington on an island game? We're going to find out. Washington's kind of been up and down. Their defense very tough versus the run. They do have a couple of talented cornerbacks. Uh, they are a good defense. They can apply pressure on the passer. Uh, and this is a division game, so anytime you see a divisional game, it, it kind of tempers my expectations in terms of fantasy. But Carson Wentz is Carson Wentz. He's he's as good as it gets at quarterback. And in this game especially, you could roll with Colt McCoy, but a lot of people are going to roll with Carson Wentz in their captain spot, hoping for that three-touchdown game. He does have the ability to run one in, although with the leg injury last year, you can see he has not done that this season. Now, Colt McCoy at 13-2 at captain is going to present people with at least a discussion. He does throw a bunch of interceptions. He always has. But uh, the way that you attack this Philadelphia defense is with the pass on the outside, outside the hashes, and you use your uh, wide receivers to do it. He's got a couple of really good tight ends. He's got Vernon Davis, who's apparently just never going to age. And he's got Jordan Reed, who has maintained health throughout this season giving him some ability to throw the ball on the inside. And he does have some young weapons on the outside, albeit they're a little bit injured and dinged up and, and depleted from what they were at the beginning of the season. There are still targets that he can throw to on the outside. Not out of the realm of possibility that McCoy could pay off here as a captain, mostly because of what else you can fit around him in a lineup. Uh, Alshon Jeffrey, probably somebody I'm not going to utilize in the captain spot. He does have touchdown upside, but I haven't seen it as consistently enough as I'd want it. Jordan Reed questionable for tomorrow's, uh, for the Monday night football game. So we'll see how, how his health pans out. Uh, last few games, though, we've at least seen him get the targets that we want, get utilized inside the red zone like we want. 
8.2K, I prefer him as a flex play to a captain spot. Josh Adams, also questionable for Monday night, but he should play. Uh, and the kid looks talented. He's getting the volume that we want. Uh, he saw one game where he got a bunch of usage in the passing game and then didn't against the Giants for whatever reason. You saw the Giants get torched on Sunday of Week 13 by Tariq Cohen. So why they wouldn't utilize him in the passing game uh, in that game, I don't know. Maybe it was just a product of bad game script against New Orleans, why they were utilizing him so much in the passing game that night. Uh, and against the Giants, a much closer game. They didn't have to. They just pounded him on the ground. But the usage is there, and the usage is encouraging. He also had a 50-yard touchdown called back. Uh, I believe against the Giants for a hold. So Josh Adams, big time upside, big play upside, uh, and has taken over the number one spot. I think that he is most certainly captain uh, eligible and one of the players that I think is most likely to be my captain or at least my heaviest allocation of captain on this slate. Golden Tate, somebody else that people are obviously going to want to talk about because he is now starting to see targets. I don't know, man. I could see him utilizing a flex. I'm going to have allocation of him, obviously, for tournaments. If I do do uh, 100 or 150 lineups for this slate, but he's not really a core play for me, uh, at least not here. So let's take a look at a couple of things. One, let's take a look at a Colt McCoy lineup just to start with, right? So Colt McCoy, I already said that I want to get Wentz in there. I'm sorry, I want to get Ertz in there. Uh, I want to get at least one of McCoy's targets. So I'm going to go with Dotson, who is... Uh, a great matchup on the outside. I want to have some Josh Adams in this lineup, leaving us with 5.4K. Here's the no man's land, right? So we talk about this gap between the lowest rated high dollar player at 7,200, it's Golden Tate. And then there's this gap that falls down to the backup quarterbacks, Foles, Sudfeld, and Sanchez. And then we come all the way down here to 5.8 before we get another actual playable player, 5.8, 5.4 for Nelson Aguilar, Trey Quinn, uh, Jamison Crowder, we're going to have to check the injury report. We're going to have to see if he's active. If he's active, I like him at 5K. If not, no, obviously. Uh, the defenses, if you want to play one of them, this comes down to your groupings. Now, if you're using a lineup builder to build your lineups, you're going to want to group the kickers and the defenses together so that you play one out of the four uh, max in a lineup. So you can set your group up. If you're using the Daily Roto lineup builder, uh, you use don't set a key for the group. You just pick all four of those players, the kicker, uh, on both teams and the defenses and special teams for both teams. And you say, uh, at most, use one of these in a lineup. So not minimum, not between zero, not between one and one, not between one and two. Uh, make sure you set it at most one in any lineup uh, for your tournaments. Too many people are relying at this point in the season based on how the pricing was. Now, at the beginning of the year, we were rolling two kickers, highest guy in the, in the captain spot. The meta has kind of changed here because DraftKings has changed the pricing. So as they've changed the pricing, we've had to adapt as players. And while playing a defense gives you a high floor for cash and was something that, or two kickers, was giving you a high floor for tournaments and allowed you to stuff in all the other players, they've changed it so that one, now it doesn't allow that. Two, they've plugged in a bunch of players down here who actually play snaps. Maurice Harris, uh, coming in at 2,800, has seen a bunch of targets, did not really come through on him the last couple of weeks, but at least you know this is somebody who's running routes and is getting targeted. Vernon Davis, 2,400. Capri Bibbs, involved in the passing game, even though he's not a great pass catching back, Adrian Peterson has proved that he is definitely not the guy who uh, you want to rely on in your passing game, so at least he's getting some snaps. And the players down here have the upside of scoring a touchdown, the upside of getting three catches for 40 yards and a touchdown. And defenses and kickers really don't have that unless they kick two 50-yard field goals, unless they return two touchdowns. Totally different sort of scenario and a much higher upside for the positional player that can get you 25 or 30 fantasy points where a kicker really can't. Uh, as well as giving you, or, sorry, the other ones give you a higher floor theoretically but if you find a guy like that's down here who's going to give you a high floor on snaps, high floor on routes run, then you're going to want to go with one of these guys down in here, Capri Bibbs, Vernon Davis, if Jordan Reed doesn't play tomorrow night. Uh, if you want to go with the backup Clement, uh, he's going to get you, you know, I don't know, five to ten touches tomorrow night as well. If he happens to score a touchdown or bust a long one, that's going to bust the, the tournament wide open for you. So looking for a play down here that I really like. I mean, we could just be safe and go with the Redskins defense. Like I said, just play one of them. Uh, you know, hoping for, for sacks and interceptions here, leaving us with 7.8K. We can reach back up here and get Adrian Peterson or Golden Tate to go with uh, McCoy or to just run it back here. Be sure that if you're playing with a captain who's a quarterback, you're at least having one 
possibly two of his targets in uh, in the rest of your lineup. So if we run with a Carson Wentz lineup, a captain spot Carson Wentz lineup, we're going to want to have at least one, possibly two of his pass catchers in the lineup, whether that's going to be Alshon Jeffrey, whether you want to go with Golden Tate, who's gotten some catches uh, the last few games. If we can plug Adams in here, now we have to bring it back with somebody on the other side because we can't have all the players from one team. Uh, Vernon Davis doesn't get a ton of work, but he does have touchdown upside. Can plug in Vernon Davis at 24, leaving us with 5,300. If Crowder's playing, I like him. Uh, is Chris Thompson ready? Like, can he get, can he get like usage finally? You know, is he back? Uh, if Crowder's playing, I like him at, at 5,000, finishing off that lineup. And there's a bunch of different ways that you can go. You can also get a little bit funky if you want to plug Josh Adams into your captain spot, which opens up a little bit more salary than the other guys. Now we can just basically plug everybody in that we want. Uh, you can plug Adrian Peterson, although I don't really like playing Peterson on the road against a defense that's been tough on the interior, uh, at least historically. They're not really this year, but still. And then you got to find two low-dollar players to go with. So that's basically it for, for this week's single game showdown on Monday Night Football. Thank you guys for tuning in. Remember, I play those slates much more casually than I play the Sunday slates. I play them for GPPs for the bank factor to try and take down a tournament. Maybe I can differentiate and win with something that's a little bit off the reservation in terms of combination of players because there's going to be a lot of overlap. Most weeks this year, if you take down one of these single game showdown slates, you're taking it down with about 100 to 200 of your best friends. So you're not getting that $200,000 that's sitting all the way up top. You're splitting first through 200th and you're splitting it evenly with those 200 people. The one that I took down earlier this year, I think it was about 4,200 uh, in total for that win, which again, that's pretty awesome. You know, like I said, I'm playing it casually. I'm not playing that in order to try and boost my bankroll. I'm playing it to try and enhance the game experience and have a good time with an island game on Monday Night Football. Not the highest total game, not two of my favorite teams in terms of fantasy, but it's going to be a good watch. And I hope that this was for you as well. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll catch up to you later. Bye.